In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasul Allah. Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and welcome to our uh, first class for today, uh, which is our uh, class on fiqh, on how to pray, how to perform the prayer. And before we begin the class, I want to remind everyone, don't forget that tonight is the, uh, uh, the call in and ask Sister Layla live show. Uh, everybody uh, uh, looks forward to that, uh, the, the call in. It's tonight at 9 p.m. Tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can call your questions in and inshallah, I'll try to answer them about Islam. And um, also just let everybody know, alhamdulillah, we are now also streaming on linked. As you guys can see, we are now streaming live on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. So for those of you professionals who uh, have a professional account with a link, uh, look for us there, you know, under my name, uh, Layla Nashiba or Suna followers, and you will see uh, the live stream is, in fact, we're streaming now, inshallah. You should be able uh, to see us now. And just let everybody know, to all the people who are on link, LinkedIn listening to me now, you can type on the screen and I will be able to, inshallah, see your uh, type, your comments, your uh, whatever about the classes. You can type on the screen and link and inshallah, I'll be able to see them and I can share your comments with the other people here. Okay, so let's get started. Because we've been speaking about how to pray the way that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to pray. And uh, as you guys can see, there are some things that people do when it comes to the prayer that are innovations. And there are some things that are not. Uh, yesterday, we spoke about some of the common innovations. Uh, that people make uh, with the Adhan calling. Uh, can anyone uh, tell us what are some of the innovations that we spoke about yesterday that many people uh, commit when calling the Adhan? Anyone here? What are some of the common innovations? Uh, One innovation is saying, um, calling the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he did not say, calling him a, a master or a leader, a leader, I'm sorry. Exactly. And this is something that you will sometimes hear people uh, do when they're calling the Adhan. They'll add uh, to the uh, uh, to the Quran, uh, to the Adhan, oh, the Prophet, leader of the our leaders, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's not part of the Adhan. We don't add that. Um, to the Adhan. Are there any other innovations that we spoke about yesterday in regards to the Adhan? Anybody Another else? Are, go ahead, Tony. I'm sorry. Another innovation is people that are there, they sing the Adhan and they also um, elongate the letters that are not elongated. Exactly. And this is a big problem, guys, uh, that we have with the Adhan and with people reciting the Quran. They're over elongating, they're singing. Instead of them reciting the beautiful Arabic as it is with the proper tajweed, they're singing it and putting their own twist to it. And what happens when we over elongate like that? When we take the Arabic and over elongate the, 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 the vowels and words, what happens then? Change, um, the we change the meaning of it. exactly we end up changing the meaning and this is something that we don't want to do so this is why we have to be very 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 careful uh with to not over elongate the pronunciation of the adhan and the quran too because you're changing the words you're changing the meaning and this is a big big innovation uh what are some other forms of innovation uh, in regards to calling the Adhan. Anyone? Okay. Um, what about this? 
What is a, a very common innovation that many people do in regards to the Fajr Adhan? Can anybody remember? That they do, um, that they get up and do dhikr, they do um, remembrance, uh, dhikr sitting there before the Fajr for um, just making it a ritual that they have to do it before Fajr every, you know. Exactly. Whatever. This is a big innovation. A lot of people will get up uh, at the time of the Adan for Fajr and sit there with uh, supplications and words of remembrance of Allah. You know, right at the time of the Adhan, I mean, this we're not speaking about the last third of the night because we all know that during the last third of the night, that's for the best time to make dua. But these are people that wait for the Adhan for Fajr and then they sit there and zikr and, 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 and make supplications and they use weak hadiths uh, for that. Okay. And what's another common um, uh, innovation we spoke about yesterday? Anybody else with any others? Uh, another one was um, that was said about um, that Abu Bakr used to kiss the, his index fingers and wipe over his eyes. Yes, this is, and those hadiths are not authentic. <clears throat> uh, you will hear some Muslims call the Abdan and they kiss their fingers and wipe their eyes. And they say that they do that because the prophet said anyone who does this when called in the Adhan, Allah will never take your eyesight away and all this. Those hadiths are not authentic. In fact, they're fabricated lies. There's a lot of lies that people make up about the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unfortunately. You know, so mashallah, these are just some of the many different uh, innovations that you may find the people engaging in when it comes to uh, the Adan. And uh, again, uh, today what I'm gonna do is go into some details about the preparation of the prayer. Cause now that we've covered wudu, we've covered the call to prayer. We're now going to get into the actual prayer itself. But after the Adhan has been called and before the Ikamit, e e e what you want to do is get prepared. And so today, let me put the PowerPoint up. We're going to speak about how to prepare for the prayer, what the Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, uh, told us to do in regards to preparing for the prayer and hold on i just uh closed it let me open it back up hold on okay here we go let's start it from right here okay so now that we know that the time for prayer has begun or after hearing that Adhan call, then this is when we make the preparations to pray. And by the way, look at this picture. I put this picture here on purpose. Who can tell me what time of, of Salat is this? What prayer time is this? Can you guys see it? Okay, let me share the screen. I want everybody to look at this PowerPoint and tell me what prayer time is this? What time of, of prayer, what time of day is this? Anyone? Look at the sky, look at the sun, look at the placement of the sun, look at the surroundings, and what time of prayer is this? That looks like Mirhaban. Right, because the bottom is red and the top is yellow and orange. Okay, anybody else? Everybody agree with her on this? She says, this is my grip. I say also, and that for the forbidden time to pray, right? Because the sun is like not all the way set yet. Okay, believe it or not, guys, this is the beginning of my grip, as Sister Ifti said. 
And how can you tell because of that red? This is really the, the when the Adhan is called. This is when, when you see the yellow is really mixed with orange. It gets yellower at the top, but the this is all this is the red, then it's becoming orange, and it gets uh, you know more yellow up here. But this is the beginning of Maghrib. The sun has set. You see, it's, set, it's, it's basically setting. This is the horizon. It's setting. Look at those shadows. The shadows are really gone. Remember Aser. You can tell if it's Aser because the shadow remains. The shadow remains. The shadows are gone here. All you see is the reflection of the tree in the water. These are reflections of the tree, but there's no shadows. No shadows of the mountains. No shadows of anything. This is Maghrib. This is a time of a uh, Maghrib. Okay. So once a person is certain that the time for prayer has begun, that's when we pray. Okay. But before you pray, there's a few things that we have to make sure are intact. Number one, purity from major and minor impurities. Remember, Allah tells us in the Quran and in the interpretation, the meaning, oh, you who believe when you rise for the prayer, wash your faces and your hands up to the elbows and lightly rub your hands and wash your feet up to the ankles. If you are unclean, purify yourselves. And when Allah sent this verse down, Ibn Umar told us that the prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah does not accept any prayer that was not performed while in a state of purity, nor does he accept charity from what has been stolen. Okay, so uh, when that Adan is called, you know it's time to pray. That's when you get up and make your wudu. Now, let me ask a question just to see how well your memory is. Okay, the Adan has been called you know that it is now time to pray. However, you are a woman who is suffering with discharge. When you go to make your wudu, you notice that you have discharge in your undies. What do you do? What do you do? Or you're a man. You go to make wudu and you realize that you have a little discharge in your undies. What do you do? Who can remember? You wash your underwear with the water and you wash yourself. Okay, and let me listen. And I want y'all to answer the whole question. Okay, it's time to pray. You go to make wudu and you realize that you have discharge. What do you do? Let's ask it again and get a complete answer. What do we do, guys? private parts and then you make a new would you and then you pray exactly you you when you go and, and see that you have a discharge you just wash your private part and then you make your do and then you go and join the line to pray thank you or oh, is that sister norto mashallah that's one of the twins y'all finally get to hear them on the microphone that's norto and her sister that answered that question there, alhamdulillah. That was Sister Norto's one with the big face that's grinning with the dimple. Alhamdulillah. So that's what you do. But what about this? The Adan has been called and it's time to pray. You go to make your wudu and you are a, um, a woman that is suffering with istihada. What do you do? See how I'm going to throw these questions back over to you. We covered all this. I have istahada, which is nonstop bleeding. And this one is real istahada. You know, what do I do? It's time to pray. Anyone? Okay. 
everybody's i got a mostly all my students are women and you women don't know what to do you just wash your private part make will do and then you pray exactly the same thing if it is true it's the harder and how would you know if it's it's the harder family because it comes as a light small bleeding and it doesn't have any smell or any of that um regular period stuff exactly remember we talked about that it's the hada is not menses it's not the color of menses it doesn't have the smell of menses or any of that it's the sign that something is wrong with you and if you notice that you're bleeding like that after you get through praying you need to call your doctor and make an appointment to go see a doctor because that's a sign that something's wrong and you don't want to wait because you'll end up having to have a hysterectomy or something. If a woman bleeds from up there that's a, and it's not her menses, that's the law's way of letting you know that something's out of control. If you catch it early, it can be prevented. If you catch it early, it can be fixed. Okay. So the time for prayer has come in. The Adhan has been called. We go to make Wudu. So uh, 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 this is what we do uh, when the time of prayer uh, comes. Now, what about this, guys? Allah says, wash your face and then your hands up to the elbows and then lightly rub your hands together and wash your feet. What's missing from this and why? What's missing from this and why? Anyone? There is a Go ahead. What's missing and why, people? Your your nose and your mouth. Okay, good job. And why are they missing? Because that's a sunnah. Exactly, exactly. Remember, Allah tells us in the Quran to wash our faces and our hands up to the elbows and the feet. But if you want the reward of getting, having forgiveness of your past sins, you have to also do the nose and mouth as taught to us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic hadith. And I want y'all to remember that if you do just this, then your wudu is accepted and you can pray. But if you want the reward that of having forgiveness of your minor sins from prayer to prayer, from wudu to wudu, then you have to also do the nose and mouth and follow the sequence given to us by the prophet. And that's based on the hadith where he says, anyone who makes wudu correctly as I have shown you, okay? So he puts that in that hadith. So this is acceptable. Your prayers are accepted, but you're not gonna get that extra reward. Why do we do the Sunan actions? We do the Sunan actions of everything for the reward they bring. Okay, everybody understand that. All right, so we've purified ourselves. We've made our wudu. We have to also check the purity of your clothing and where you're gonna be praying at. In other words, some of the objects should be clean of physical impurities as much as possible. Remember, Allah loves cleanliness. You should find a place to pray that's clean. And if you can, remove any impurities from your praying area, okay? And also your clothing. However, if you cannot remove them, you can still pray with the impurities present. And you don't have to repeat that prayer over. Does everybody understand that? And where's my Dalil? Remember, Islam is based on two sources, the Quran and the authentic hadiths. If a person's telling you 
that you must do something a certain way or you should do something. They have to bring the proof. Here's the proof. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, he said, stay clean of urine because the majority of punishment in the grave is due to it. So you want to make sure that there's no urine on your clothing. This is why, you know, if you go and realize that you discharge in your underwear, you simply wash your private parts and sprinkle water over your underwear or you can change them. Okay. We also have this, this hadith, which is a dalio for that. Ali said, I used to suffer with prosthetic fluid. So I asked a man to ask the prophet about it because I was too shy. And he asked the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, make wudu and wash your private part. So there's your dalil. And this is all these hadiths are Bukhari. Okay. Also, we have another hadith where Aisha, I'm always going to throw in a female. I'm going to always throw in a female companion to show you that the women are just as knowledgeable, if not more so than men. Aisha also tells us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the women who were suffering from istahada to wash the blood from themselves and then pray. And this hadith is Bukhari and Muslim. So here you can see the evidence, the evidence to everything that I've asked you. That's how we prepare for the prayer. That's how you check to make sure that you are pure and good to pray. And I hope that's clear uh, to everyone. Let me look on uh, uh, the social platforms. Walaikum salam. And by the way, if there's anyone listening on linked, LinkedIn, because we are now broadcasting live on LinkedIn. If there's anyone listening on LinkedIn, if you want to type, you can type in the text box the chat box. And inshallah, I will be able to see your typing. So if you like to answer or ask a question, type it in that box and you should be able to see me. You should be able to see me type here and you can type here. Okay. So we've checked our clothing. We've made our wudu. But when we check that clothing, understand that Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, purify your raiment. Ibn Abbas told us raiment here refers to your clothing, whatever you're wearing to pray in. We have the hadith where a man asked the prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may I pray in the same clothes that I wore, that I had on when I had relations with my wife. The prophet said, yes, but if you see some stains on it, wash it out. And we talked about this before. So if you got, you got, you made your wudu, okay, the, the area that you're going to pray in is clean and you're looking at your clothes and you see a stain or a spot there. Oh, what is this? Oh, just wash it off. Get a, You can get a, a wipe, a body wipe and dab it off, a washcloth and just dab it off or scrape it off with your hand. You don't have to take the whole abaya off. You don't have to take the whole uh, thobe off and wash it, just the spot. Dab that spot clean, okay? Also, proof that you can pray in the clothes that you have relations in. Muawiyah asked his sister, who was the wife of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Um Habiba, did the Prophet pray in the same clothes that he wore when he had relations with you? She said, yes, if there were no stains in it. If there were stains, he'd dab them off. He'd wear the garment and, and dab the stain off, okay? Also, another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam removed his shoes and the people behind him did the same. 
And when he finished the prayer, he asked him, and this is proof that you can pray in your shoes. Because the prophet and the companions, I want you guys to understand, this was the 8th century. And in the 8th century, they did not have carpet. The masjid's ground was sand. And the sand in the desert, if you guys ever go to the desert, that sand is hot. So they prayed with their shoes on. They didn't start praying without shoes until they got carpet during the caliphate of Umar. Okay, so they prayed on the in the sand, so they wore shoes. Because there are some Muslims that think that we can't wear shoes when we pray. That's not true. Well, this time the prophet took his shoes off and he asked the people, Why did you take yours off? They said, Because we saw you take yours off. He said, Well, the reason I took my shoes off was because Jabril came to me and told me that there was some filth on them. So when one of you comes to the mosque, you should turn your shoe over and look at the bottom. If you find any filth on the bottom, then rub them against the ground and pray with them on. Okay. And why the ground? Because the earth purifies whatever walks over it. So say you, um, you get ready to pray. You're at home. You got your shoes on. You done checked your clothes. You see that your clothes are free of stain. You did find a, a spot of, of spaghetti. So you wipe the spaghetti off, okay, or whatever. And so now you want to check your shoes. Check the bottom to see if there's any dung on it. You know, you might have stepped in dung or stepped in urine from a dog or a cat or something. And if you see it, then wipe your feet, the bottom of your feet off. Everybody see how easy the dean is. You don't have to take the shoes off. You can still keep the shoes on and pray in them, but wipe the, you no, know, rub your feet against the earth, the ground, the floor, because rubbing against the ground, the earth, the floor purifies whatever walks across it. Okay. Also, the same thing, if you go to the mosque with your shoes on and you are unaware that you have some an impurity on the bottom of them and you remember during the prayer, then try to remove it by rubbing your feet together on the ground, you know, rubbing your feet on the ground and then continue with your prayer. You don't have to make that prayer over. You guys understand? Just stand, keep on, you know, stand where you are, Allah Akbar. You notice that there's some dirt. You look down and see dirt. Just rub your feet like this to the ground and just keep praying, okay? And uh, you don't have to repeat that prayer. And there's the Dalil for that. There's the evidence for that. And also the purity of the place. Uh, uh, remember the Hadith about the Bedouin who came and urinated in a mosque? The people got up to grab him, but the prophet said, let him be. Just take some water and, and pour it over the urine. Okay, and that's what we do. If you see dirt on the ground or, or whatever, or the mosque, you know, urine, maybe it's from a cat, a dog, or one, a kid. Nowadays, the children run through the mosque doing all kind of crazy stuff. Just get a bucket of water and pour it over and keep it going. Everybody understand that? So again, all of these hadiths are to illustrate to you, to show you just how simple and how easy this religion is. All you have to do is learn it correctly, learn it from a person of knowledge and be careful who you choose to teach you. You want to make sure that you're not learning Islam from a person that's reading fatwas because this is what they're doing today. You got a bunch of young men in their 30s, in their early 40s, calling themselves sheikh, okay? And these men have never studied the hadith. They may have studied the 40 hadiths of Imam Nawawi. whoop de doo But they never learned Bukhari. They never learned the whole collection of Bukhari, Muslim, and all the rest of them, Muatta and the rest of them. OK, they just learned a few books by heart, which are not really sources anyway. OK, 
You want to learn from a person that's teaching you the way I'm teaching you right here, directly from the Hadith. I am not using a book written by any Tom, Dick, Jane, and Harry. I am using the Bukhari, Muslim, Termidi, uh, Muwata Hadiths and taking the stuff out of there and putting it here for y'all to see. And that's why I always list the source. You can see any scholar of Hadith will say, mashallah, that's what she's doing. She's going through the sitta. I'm not reading from no book. I'm going through the sitta with this. The book of prayer, the sitta of each uh, collection, the book of prayer, okay? All right. Also, this is a big question that many of you ask. We had Brother Ahmad yesterday or a day before. Is Brother Ahmad here, by the way? I haven't seen uh, Brother Ahmad. He, has he been on uh, Brother Ahmad? I haven't seen him on uh, YouTube or anything. And this is our Brother Ahmad, guys. That's our Brother Ahmad. He's one of the moderators. Uh, here and I haven't seen him. Uh, let's hope that he's okay with his family. I know he takes care of his mom and his dad. He lives in Pakistan. Okay, but this is a question that Brother Emad has asked many times. He asked about um, the aura, the aura, or the nakedness. When y'all hear that Arabic word aura. It refers to the nakedness, the private parts or the parts of the body that must be covered, not should be covered, must be, because Allah is the one that makes the commands. Okay, so let's talk about the aura, the aura, what must be covered when it comes time for the prayer, all right? First of all, listen to what Allah says. In the interpretation of the meaning, O children of Adam, take your adornment for every mosque. Now, we're going to talk about this verse in another class because when you read even the Arabic, a lot of Muslims misconstrue the meaning of adornment. They think adornment means makeup, they think adornment means other stuff. We're going to talk about that in another class. But here Allah is telling us to take our adornment by wearing proper clothing for every mosque. And what he means in this, uh, the meaning of adornment in this verse is to cover the nakedness. <clears throat> if you look at the Arabic word for this, remember I tell you guys, Arabic is not like English, one word. Like Brother Abdullah showed us yesterday, one word can mean a, a 300 different things, depending on how it's used in a sentence. This word that uh, translates to adornment in English, it can mean different things depending on how it's used. The way it's used in this verse of the Quran, the adornment here refers to covering your naked parts, your private parts. And even the word mosque, Allah uses the word mosque here. But mosque also means a hundred different things in English. In Arabic, it takes on a hundred different meanings depending on how it's used. The word mosque here means prayer. Y'all see that? And where did I get this from? I got this from Ibn Umar and Ibn Abbas, and also Aisha, all three of them define the meaning of this verse. And all three of them say, when Allah said, take your dormant, he meant uh, the your nakedness. And when he said mosque here, he meant prayer. So this is what I'm saying. Islam is based on two sources, the Quran and the Hadith. And if there's something that's not clear, because one word can mean a hundred different things in Arabic, that's when we look to see what those original companions said it meant. Because Allah tells us in the Quran that nobody, I repeat, 
Nobody, I repeat, nobody understands this religion better than those first generation of Muslims. So I'm not going to look on the internet to see what some grand mufti or some sheikh or some fatwa online got to say. I'm going to look to see how Ibn Umar, Ibn Abbas, Aisha, Ibn Umar, Um Salama, Atika, Anas, Saeed al Kudri, Ali. I'm going to look to see how any of those original companions define the meaning of it. And they all agree on the meaning of it here. And I'm going to tell you guys, when you base your knowledge that way, you're going to find out that the companions didn't disagree on much stuff at all. There were only three things, three issues that the companions disagreed on. Everything else, they were in sync. Okay. Most people don't know that because we don't learn about the companions no more. We don't even deal with the hadith. We're in the days of fatwa. Just because you memorize Sheikh so-and-so's fatwas, you think you a scholar. Just because you memorize the 40 hadiths of Imam Nawi, you think you a scholar. I'm sorry, that ain't it, baby cakes. You ain't nowhere close to being a scholar. Nowhere. Because those ain't the sources. Neither one are sources. Okay, so that's what the word adornment means here, you know, and mosque means here. Okay, so let's look at it. So Allah is saying, cover your private parts for every prayer. So we look at this verse, O children of Adam, take your adornment for every mosque. Allah is saying in simple English, Cover your nakedness for every prayer. Y'all see that? Mosque means prayer. Adornment means nakedness. Private parts. Okay? And when Allah sent this verse down, Salama, the son of El Aku. He said that he went to the prophet and asked him, he said, oh, prophet of Allah, can I pray in a long shirt? Because this verse came down where Allah said, cover your nakedness for every prayer. So that shows how the companions were. They didn't argue. They didn't question it. They ran to the prophet and said, okay, I want to obey Allah. I yield. I submit. Can I pray in a long shirt? And the prophet said, yes, but button it. Button it up. Button the shirt. Now y'all see where Sheikh Atlee's coming from. I don't need to read a fatwa from Islam Q&A. Button it up. A man's uh, chest is not part of his order, remember? Like Sheikh Atlee was telling y'all. But even though it's not part, button it up. We're going to get to the shoulders too. That stuff should be covered. If you a man, you should not pray with your chest out. If you're a man, you should not pray in a wife beater unless you have no choice. Now, if you don't have no other shirt, then your chest can be open because it's not your nakedness. But if you got a long shirt, which these companions had, they called them tunics. They wore tunics that covered their arm, their shoulders and went all the way down to their knee. Yes, you can, but button it. Button it up the front so that your chest is not showing and your private parts are not showing. Y'all get it? This is why it's important to learn these hadiths and stop reading fatwas. And there's the Dalil. Sahi what? Sahi what? Sahi Bukhari. And don't ask me how to spell it. Okay. So uh, these are the things you want to do 
to prepare yourself for prayer. Okay, you want to get up after that Adhan is called. You want to go into the bathroom to make your wudu. Once you get in there, if you see that there's discharge, just wipe your private part. You can use the body wipes and go ahead and, and sprinkle water over your undies and then go ahead and uh, in the inside of undies and just go ahead and make wudu. And then after you get to the wudu, check your clothes. Check your abaya if you are a woman like me. Check and make sure that I don't have any uh, stains, you know, I, you know, stains from cooking for me because I don't have a husband, alhamdulillah. So I got to make sure that I'm clean for Allah. Oh, I got any spaghetti sauce on me? And if I do, I'm going to wipe it off. For you sisters that are married, check to see if there's any spaghetti sauce or anything else. Wipe it off. Dab it off. Okay. Then wherever you're praying at, make sure it's clean there. That there is nothing all over the floor. You move that stuff out the way so you can pray. Okay. So I'm going to stop right here for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to go over some more things that you should check. But I don't want to give y'all too much at one time. But you can see where I'm going with the clothing. I'm going to go into that nakedness in more detail tomorrow for you brothers. And I'm going to show you that hadith that Sheikh Atley was talking about, where if you can, you should cover the shoulders. But if you don't, you know, a man's chest is not part of his order if he has no way of covering it up. But if you can cover that up, cover it up. Like the prophet said, button it up if you can. But if you don't have nothing else to wear but a loin cloth, back in them days, that's all they had was loin cloths. Then put on your loin cloth, cover yourself if you a man, from your navel to the knee. For the woman is different. For the woman is different. Our whole body should be covered except this, as Aisha said. This, as Aisha said. This, as Aisha said. And this is authentic. This is authentic. This is authentic. Some men will get rigid and tell you, oh, stop the law, part of her arm. It's falls under the category of what naturally appears thereof. And we'll talk about that in my class on the lawful and unlawful. Some things cannot be prevented. I'm dressed in a, a baya. I am dressed the way that my Lord commands me. If I stand up, you're not going to see nothing but my face and hands. My feet are even covered because they're supposed to be covered too. But if I raise my arm up, I can't help this. I can't help this. This is what naturally appears. If I go to the grocery store, I reach for something. I'm covered, but I can't help this part that shows. And that's why Aisha, Ibn Umar, um, uh, Saeed El Kudri, and all the other companions said, and, and Ibn Abbas too, this, because this cannot help but be seen. Do you women understand? And I got people listening to me on linked who are professors of Islamic history. They are professors of Arabic. They live in the Emirates. They live in Egypt. They live in Saudi. And they will tell you, I'm speaking the truth. It ain't about what these fake blades here are telling y'all. This you can't help. Layla's dressed appropriately. Everybody understand that? All right, I'm going to stop right here. If there's any questions or comments, you go ahead and ask them. And we're going to go over those hadiths tomorrow about the aura of the woman too. But all that's going to be tomorrow. I just don't want to give y'all too much Today, I wanted y'all to see what Sheikh Atley was talking about, about the chest, because that's one of the questions that Brother um, Ahmad asked. Yeah, the chest is not part of your aura, but the prophet said when it come to pray, you got a shirt on, button it, dude. I'm always going to have people's back.
I'll try to support you and have your back always because I know these hadiths. I don't know how to speak Arabic fluently. I can read the Quran, but I know the hadiths and I'll help you with that. All right. Questions, comments. Thank you uh, for explaining um, the awda of the men because, you know, it's very, very rare that we get to hear that or, you know, we, we just think men can wear whatever they want. And, you know, there's no shame um, on, on a man's body, you know, um, and it's always just a woman's body that needs to be covered and, you um, you know, I, I'm really glad because I I have been seeing brothers uh, praying in wife beaters. I have seen brothers uh, praying, and and there's no reason they have a closet full of clothes. You know, they they have options, and to, ain't no one living like the time of the prophet. No one is living like the time of the prophet. So the brothers need to put clothes on too. Exactly. And that's the point that Sheikh Ali was making. And I, he just didn't give y'all the Dalil. And some of y'all question it. Well, I'm giving it to you. I know these hadiths. Okay. And yes. Yeah, so yeah, but if you had, and that's why, that's why you got a different answer from Sheikh Morsi. Y'all remember when y'all asked Sheikh Morsi that? Is, is, uh, is a man's shoulder part of the question that was posed to Sheikh Morsi was, are a man's shoulders part of his order? And he said, no, they're not, which they're not. Well, can a man pray with, with, with his shoulders out? Yeah, yeah, I got to go. He gave y'all the short, quick, condensed answer. But if you had a taken the question into detail, he would have answered just like Sheikh Atley. He would have told you, but if you have no choice, yes. But you brothers got clothes, y'all got shirts. There's no excuse. Remember, Sheikh Morsi didn't even know what a wife beater was. Remember, he didn't know what that was. He said, what's the wife beater? I said, I don't know. He said, we don't beat wives. <laughs> he didn't even know what a wife beater was. <laughs> but Sheikh Mor Atley knows what a wife beater is. He done been around a lot of wife beaters. <laughs> and that's why Sheikh Atley told you, and he's right. And Sheikh Morsi would tell you the same thing. You brothers got clothes. Put on some clothes for when you prepare for prayer. Ain't no excuse for you to be wearing no wife beater to pray in. Because you got shirts. And like Ifti said, the companions were poor. They didn't have clothes. So if they didn't have a choice but to put on a, a loin cloth. You guys got a closet full. So don't be praying in no wife beaters. I remember when y'all asked that. I'm laughing now. I got that recorded. Sheikh Morsi said, what's a wife beater? We don't beat wives. <laughs> and I said, it's a shirt. He said, what type of shirt? I said, it's a shirt. He said, the, the man's shoulder is not part of his aura. And he had to go. Remember, guys, he didn't know what. We, but Sheikh Atley knew what y'all was talking about. Yeah. He's been around a lot of wife beaters. Say, Mor Morsi they ain't never seen none. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. But that's why I say that hadith. I knew that was going to come up. Yeah. Okay, we have another question. I can't see her. She said, uh, Hafsa asked me today, why do we face towards the Kaaba? Oh, just tell her it's so easy because the prophet wanted us to be different. He wanted us to be different than the other people because when the other people pray, they all face the direction of Jerusalem. That's just the regulations of every other people. But for us, uh, Allah said he wants us to be different. So when we pray, we face the Kabbalah instead of facing uh, Jerusalem. But for your supplications, let her know. But that's only for the five prayers. Tell her that when she makes dua, she can face whatever direction she wants to. Yeah, that's only for the five prayers because to, to make us different than the other people. But for her supplications, she don't have to face any direction, any direction she wants. Okay. 
Brother M. My type. Look, guys, can y'all see this? This is okay. His name showed up. My yeah, I okay, think he good. was delayed. I think maybe he was delayed. Wait a minute. Is that no? That's the wrong one. That's not it. Wait a minute. Hold on. That is it. Okay, he's on link now. Can you see him on link? Yes, I see it now. You yeah. see it? I in the blue. Yes. Okay, so you can see it. So, so I, that blue thing you put in the chat, uh, not in the chat, but in your camera on on um, YouTube. Oh no, no! Look in the box. The, the, the tech, the people, the box people typing in the chat box. It does not show. It, oh, so it still don't show up. Okay, no. but I see it there. It looks like a little I in. But when I do this, you see it. But it doesn't have I in on it. The other one had I in on it. When the other sister typed from uh, Emirates, hers was linked user. Oh, he oh, cause she oh, he cause he got a name. I saw, I see why his is showing up as his name. He signed in with a name. Okay, she was helping me test it out. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, so that's why it showed up as linked in because she was helping me test it. Y'all are logged in. He's logged in. Okay, you're logged in, Ahmad. I see now. You see the text from me on LinkedIn? Yeah, I saw you too. I see you right okay. here. Oh, you're logged in. Because you're logged in. See, she wasn't logged in. She was helping me. Okay. Or did I make her? I think I might have made her a moderator. So I don't see Brother Ahmad if he said anything. Oh, you Did don't he... see it in, in LinkedIn? No, in LinkedIn, all I see is my salam alaikum. That's it. You see how safe they are? So they got no. it, they got it there I... where y'all don't nobody see their comments but the person that's administrating. So it's probably only who you can you're following. So probably if I was me and Brother Ahmad were following each other, I would probably be able to see. Oh, that's you. safe. Now you see why that's professional. Yeah, that, that is good. That's a professional program. That's why I say I don't want no problems with that because that's where I'm hoping we can get our donation people from because these are all professionals. Mm -hmm. And by the way, guys, uh, just to let y'all know, uh, if everybody's enjoying learning Islam here at this website, we are desperate. Man, I only got two donations. Okay, I got a donation from Sister Mina and the, the sister from the Emirates sent a donation today. Uh, uh, besides the other ones I told y'all about. And that's it, guys. Please donate. Uh, it costs $2,000. No kidding. Because y'all see the high-tech uh, software I'm using. Y'all see all this high-tech software. This is expensive. Please, guys, support this dawah effort. Think of all the blessings you're going to get. You're going to get whatever reward Allah sends to me. Whatever reward Allah if sends to Sheikh Atley, whatever reward he gives to Sheikh Morsi, Dr. Jamali, you guys will get our reward because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your donations. So please, guys, click on the uh, QR code and support this dawah effort because I am a nervous wreck. Because I, 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 I'm, I love teaching Islam. I love using this program. And I have uh, anxiety thinking that I won't have enough donations to pay for it. And I have to stop using it. And I can't do that. I don't want to because we're reaching people all over the world. We got the Twitch people here. My kids are here from Twitch. You know, mashallah. Y'all see I, I beat the uh, hackers. The other kids that was trying to hack me, alhamdulillah, they're gone. Layla, you got to be good to come get at me. We got them. And Allah blessed us with uh, the professionals of Link. So uh, please, guys, support us. We, we, we need these donations so badly. And I'm just a living stress. I'm an old woman now, stressed out. Yeah, but the sisters and um, the Emirates and them. And by the way, guys, uh, you know, uh, with this new, by me hooking up with Link, I'm trying to also hook up with some more people uh, from uh, the Arabic world who are uh, scholars too, because there are scholars, you know, uh, in other parts of this world, you know, that, and I'm going to try to get them in here uh, so, uh, some of the sisters, the real Sheikha. I'm going to introduce y'all to some real Sheikha. 
You know, they're they're they live in the Emirates in Kuwait. They lecture on Islam, and they can really teach y'all a few things about Arabic uh, history and Arabic culture. And they don't cover their faces either. They don't cover their faces. They look just like me and dress like me. And their voices are like mine. And they make the same facial expressions I make. They don't play. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I've been I was up all night talking to some of them. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And they all speak English. I just found that out today. They said, Layla, English is the second language in all the Middle East. They said, who doesn't speak English? They make you learn it. The kids learn it in school. The kids don't even speak Arabic, half of them. English is taken over. SubhanAllah. Yes. Layla Pamela is asking if you got her donation. Yes, remember I read hers. Yeah, I read yours off the other day. Yeah, you're the one I was talking about. Yes, all yours. By the way, Pamela, you were one of the regulars. And that's what I was talking about. Yours was the last one we got up until today, yesterday, today and yesterday. Yours and um, I don't like to name y'all names. Rashida and them, my regular students. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't even be in here. Cause, but we need more because I went out and got this program, this software I'm using. We need more donations now that my regular students can't hold the website down by themselves no more. We need other help. We need support because of the technology I'm using. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to appeal to these Arabs and other people, inshallah. Wa alaikum salam, uh, Brother Douglas. Good to see that you're here. Mashallah. Yeah, and by the way, guys, I'm going to give you a quiz tomorrow to cover what we discussed today about uh, preparing yourself. So make sure y'all review this stuff. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Layla, um, the bottom name, that, that's not um, Muhammad's iPhone. That's not Chef Adli. Where? Yes, it is. That's it. Oh, yes, okay. it is. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Make him co-host. Yeah. There he is. He's probably mm -hmm. using, he's using his phone. I right, did the wrong name. We got the wrong name. You you, you co-hosted the wrong name. Okay. Can you try it now? Let's see. Okay, try it now, Shake Atley. Oh, this program is so crazy. I didn't know he was coming in with his phone. Okay, but the phone is easier since we're on late. Okay, hold on, let me. I'm still live on link too, right? The Arab people yes. there. Yes. So you can't see the people in there? No. This is a cool, I like that. They can see me. They're telling me that was a nice, like, mashallah. Um, I don't speak Arabic. Y'all know my, um, I don't speak Arabic. Okay, here's Shank Atley. He speaks Arabic, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mic test. Mic test. Mic test. Salam alaikum. We hear you, Shia. Thank you. In the Alhamdulillah. Nahmadu. يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله 
يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اجريت يو اول ذا جريتين اوف الاسلام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته may the peace and the blessing of almighty allah be with you all i like to welcome you all for our series of 200 hadith for muslim women by Muhammad S. Adli of Columbia, South Carolina. Hopefully, inshallah, the Sunnah follower station has the ability to record and the broadcast to the other places. I'm not in the mosque. I have to, I had to go someplace uh, to attend a meeting and excuse myself from the meeting for 15, 20 minutes to give you the class. I brought two, three phones with me, but it seems that none of them can catch uh, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. So hopefully that this is recorded and that it can be streamed live if it's possible, because I'm sure there are some people waiting there and I don't like to miss a class. I like to be doing my work professionally, uh, respect people's time. So I'm letting you know that I'm not in the mask and I'm only broadcasting and all this equipment that I brought with me here, none of them working other than my phone. So Alhamdulillah, at least that one of them work. Yes, uh, you're, sorry, but you're, you are broadcasting. You're, you're broadcasting everywhere right now, including LinkedIn. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Uh, our hadith today is hadith number 123. In Beijing, maybe, I don't know. 61 something 60 maybe 64 or i don't have the book with me but i know that is this hadith number 123 and abdullah أخبره أن امرأة وجدت في بعض مغازي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مقتولة فأنكر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قتل النساء والصبيان رواه البخاري The meaning of the hadith rough translation that Abdullah may Allah be pleased with him son of Umar during some of the Exhibit uh, expectation. Uh, some of the battles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That a woman that was killed. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in response to this, disapproving the killing of women as well as children and this in Sahih al-Bukhari. In this hadith, we want to talk for a minute concerning wars in Islam, expedition in Islam, invasion, 
to other countries or step in somebody else's country. Islam did not bring about wars. Islam brought about peace in this life and safety and security and happiness and also for the hereafter. Invasion of others country for selfish reasons as most of wars that nowadays exist is not acceptable in Islam. Islam is not looking for more land. Islam is looking for freedom of people from people. And also Islam looking for happiness in this life before the hereafter. Islam came to take the people from the transgression of selected people from other people. Some people, they feel they are supposed to be oppressed others because they are white and the other people black, or because they are Arab and the other people is Asian. For whatever reason, what you may call it later on, government or authority. Authority of countries and governments is nothing except a human being desires. And you know human being as a human being is selfish. It can be even selfish with his own mother and his father. But Islam came to free the people from people enslave the people, not to people, but to enslave the people to the Creator Almighty. Regardless if they want to be a Muslim or not, but not to be under aggression or injustice of people. Therefore, it comes about that umirtu an uqatil al nas I've been, as the Prophet said, I've been commanded to fight people in general until they testify to La ilaha illallah that there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah and that I am, i.e. Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. If they do so, now their blood, their property, everything of theirs is secret. So Islam is not trying to spread or force the people to be Muslims, but want to make the sure that Islam is ruling the people by Islam, not people by people, not by majority vote, not because a section of the country. Man by his own nature is greedy, selfish, and if he found a chance to eat you up alive, he is going to do although they can be saying freedom, equality, singing all these words, but nothing but words. When you fight people, you fight them for one of two, that you're going to testify to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, or you're going to fight and see who's going to win her, or that you're going to accept the governing of the Islamic ruling, which should give you a security and give you your freedom to worship what you want. But you could not rule people with your own desire because you believe that the creator of mankind is the only one can tell them what is their rights, what is their duties, what is aggression, what is freedom, what is not freedom. 
And you can see in any country, in any so-called superpower, that they're fighting each other because China wants to be the one, while America wants to be the one, while Russia are trying to be the one. And after this, you know, taking care and taking advantage of the people. So Islam will establish or when go for wars, not for wars for revenge, but it goes for to free the people from the injustice of other people, even if they are their colors, their same language. So Islam is again is the evil power and the polytheist power and make everybody to come under one umbrella, bring about justice and fairness among the people. And this could not be by any other mean other than Islam. Because Islam does not have a color. Islam does not have a special country or a special place. Islam is the law of the creator which he knows about what's good and what's bad for us. And want to establish this law on the earth so people can live in their peace. They can worship what they want to worship. They can worship the sun or the idols, but with the rest certain limits going to be bought. You don't spread the poison everywhere. You want to be Christian, be Christian. You want to be a Jew, you can be a Jew. You want to be Hindus, you can be Hindus. But you could not force your ideology on the people. Islam is not a man-made ideology. Islam is a revelation from the Creator Almighty Allah. So Islam wants to take to free the people from the slavery of other people. And also Islam concerned about people getting the benefit of the hereafter. Because you could not get the Jannah and the blessing of the hereafter unless you are a Muslim. So Islam want to sure freedom of da'wah, explanation, explanation what is Islam is, so the people can worship Allah freely and that the people can get the goodness and the best of this life, as well as the best of the hereafter. And this could not be in any system other than Islam. So this is number one that we need to establish here, because the occasion here happening to be what? That a battlefield. After the battlefield, a woman been discovered that she been killed. So the news came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam objected this and disapproved it. And he told the Sahaba that a woman is not supposed to be killed, no children. Because women doesn't carry arms, neither children. If a man fighting the super or the Islamic power, there is a man to a man. But women, they are not supposed to be attending the battles or be part of the battles or carrying any duty which is supposed to be a man work. So the Prophet Sallallahu objected that the woman and disapproved it, that this woman is killed. God knows how it can be mistaken or by blind bullet came towards the hair, but he said, women and children not to be killed. Why? because they did not 
and they are not supposed to participate, to be carrying guns, swords, fighting. So Islam won't bring this dignity and this peace for women and for children. So as the hadith say, women may not to be killed in the war. Since this was a short hadith, we're going to take also hadith 124 for today, which talks also related to women. And this is hadith 124, an Ali radiallahu sallallahu it was narrated by Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet وسلم, forbid women to shave her hair, to shave her hair. There is certain personality and adapt for a man, certain personality and behavior and appearance of a woman. And since the man been sometimes allowed or ordered to shorten or to shave his head, and a woman, part of her beauty is her hair. So when a woman tries to imitate a man, she be cursed in Islam. And also the Prophet وسلم, had made it as an injunction in Islam by saying that a woman is not supposed to shave his, her hair. She may shorten it, but not shorten it in a manner that make her look like a man. Because a man who imitates a woman is the curse, is curse. And a woman who imitates a man is curse. Doesn't matter what the imitation is. Clothes, hairstyle, walking, a man supposed to be a man, a woman supposed to be a woman. Not half man and half woman, or half woman and half man, or a woman but acting like a man and a man acting like a woman. This is the favor of Allah. Allah is the one who created the male and female. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made for each one of them certain rules and regulation to be followed, not to be mixed, and not to be out of the curve or out of the track. A man have a track, have a certain job, certain behavior, and he have to carry it. A woman have a track, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't approve people changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see that from the shair of Hajj, when a person go for Hajj, that after he made his Umrah or his Hajj, he shaved his head. And also it is permissible for him to cut it short. As for the woman, even the rituals of Hajj, that the woman to be taken like one inch from the end of her hair, but not to be in a way to imitate a man. And this will come under the category of imitation and under the people who are been cursed by Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So with this, we come to conclusion to this segment for today. And 
if you have any comments or concern, you may present it. And inshallah, if Allah will, tomorrow we'll continue with hadith number 125, which I don't record the page now, but we see it when I go back to the mosque, if Allah will.
Okay, she said my mic is off. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. Type it in English. The Shaker. The Shaker here said that you guys speak English. Shaker. Shaker Heba. She said that they, they all speak English as second languages. Use English. Yeah, I got some Shakers in here too, Shake Alley. <laughs> They don't cover their face either. I asked them. They don't cover their faces. <laughs> That's Omar here. Okay. You just type it in English. Okay. All right. Okay, that's okay, but this is new. I just this is my first day on here. But Sheikh Atley, he speaks every you know of him? Okay, this other Shaker says she's heard of you. And she's heard of me too. I know. Yeah. My sister told me that they listen to me and Bilal Phillips in the Emirates a lot. Yes, we were. She knows you, Shay Gatley. Yeah. She says she knows of you. Yeah. She said, MashaAllah, this is wonderful. Oh, alhamdulillah, sister. She said, this is wonderful having you here. She said, she's just, she said, she knows both of us, or both of us. Oh, mashallah. You can make me cry, sister. May Allah bless you. Maybe I can get you on Zoom here. Shaka. Oh, alhamdulillah. She said, may Allah bless us both, Sheikh Ali. I mean, if you give me one word from what is she writing, I may assume what you asking. And what? I have the word mumkin, mumkin. Is it possible? But I don't know what the other words. Mumkin, my, mal, that's a yeah. That's a a meme, followed by a yeah with a that that goes up like a lamb, but it's not a lamb. It's cause it's connected. Muna. Oh, I got it. Muna biahu. Cause that's a ain. Muna bi a hu. Why more? That's more. Cause that's a m a meme with a raw, or is it mood? And nobody there who reads the Arabic can translate. Amr duduhu. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Amr duduhu. Mumkin muna ba'ahu. Amr duduhu. Amr duduhu. Amr duduhu. Dal, wow, dal, and ha. I don't know. We that's a shame we can't read without the darn it's vowels. Regular Arabic for some reason. I don't Where is she from? Is she, her name is is it she she's not Moroccan, is she? Because I forgot we got Moroccans in here too. Because Moroccan dialect is what's hard. The other person they don't know what this is either. Yeah, Munkin is I know Munkin, but I don't know what that is. I think she know. might be Moroccan. Look at her picture. She might be Moroccan. She's like my sister-in-law. She says, please follow and I will follow back. Oh, that's what she's saying? Oh. Okay, this okay, here's another Arabic person coming in on from Twitch. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me put it up here. She said, she says, please follow and I will follow back. Okay, okay. She's gonna come back, I guess. Is that what she's saying? That she's gonna come back in to listen to him? Okay, mashallah. Yeah, Shay Gali, this is great. I'm so happy that I got this program to work for Link. Connect me to my, oh, there, I, even some of my family is in here, the Sadats, <laughs> the DNA people. I don't, I never met y'all, but the DNA Sadats are in here. And the El Tair, my brother in law's people from the Emirates, El Tair. We need donations. Y'all see the donation tab. El Tair. MashaAllah. We got three clicks. If we got three donation clicks. Oh, MashaAllah. Allah, please help us pay this website. This was a good idea, Sheikh Atley. The Emirates. <laughs> May Allah be. Yes, uh, Thani El Tair. Yeah, that's my sister's. Oh, you know my sister? Yeah, she's. Powerful family. I know the royal family. She's married to the royal family. <laughs> yeah. Mashallah. And 
They play us and Sheikh Atley too. You have some of his books. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Oh, Alhamdulillah. They said English is a dying language. I mean, Arabic is a dying language, believe it or not, Sheikh Atley. The people are using more English than anything. And they ordered some of your books. Uh, in fact, one lady says she ordered some for her class. She's a teacher. She teaches um, elementary Arabic. Oh, mashallah. Any, any question? Okay, yeah, that's, have, yeah, that's the only that question. May Allah bless you for this, Sheikh Ali. This was right on time. And you look so royal. I want to tell you, you look very regal, Sheikh Ali. MashaAllah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Good inshallah, for the Arabic class at 4 o'clock. And we continue with our discussion, inshallah, tomorrow, if Allah will. Thank you very much for joining us. And may Allah bless you all. And be concerned about attending the class and being in time. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you, people from the Emirates, for the donations too. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Ifti, this was a good idea. You see, we got three clicks there. We got some donations. Oh.